What's up YouTube? In this video we're going to talk about the system dialogues. If you recall I have made a video some time back about the file upload using WebDriver and you probably remember that this website if you watched it. Uh, this particular website did not accept the conventional way of uploading um, files. The conventional way was to send keystrokes directly to the file uh, file input uh, field, but this website did not take it. So in this video we're going to talk about how to actually do file upload through the system dialogues. So and system dialogues are nothing more than this kind of dialogues. Whenever you click something in the browser, that prompts you to point to a file that's the system dialog so we'll discuss two main ways the first one is through uh, pybernado and the second one is through um, image recognition uh, framework called Secure. both ways are free both of them are open source i believe um, so let's go ahead and dive in so for this, PyWinado does not come by default on Windows, and this is only going to work on Windows, by the way, guys. So PyWinado does not come on Windows by default, so you'll need to do a pip install minus u uh, PyWinado, and then psutil, and we'll talk about more why we need psutil. Um, you'll need to do pip install psutil. So here we have uh, a wrapper class for the system dialog um, inside we have recursion limit we'll talk about that a little bit later then we have the constructor constructor takes in the application process id and i'll talk about what that is and how to get that a bit later as well and then it takes the dialog title the dialog title is nothing more than the string that you see in the dialog over here when you open it um, so you pass in the title depending on the title the accept uh, button will be calculated um well or, uh, determined i guess um if the dialog title does not change then the accept button will be assumed to be open uh, however if you change it and i think the secondary common uh, most common dialog that you can have is save as uh, so the accept button then will change to save. Um, the client button I think is always going to stay the same, uh, but if you encounter a dialog that is a bit different, uh, that has different buttons, maybe different titles, uh, you can always come over here and change this logic up a little bit to suit your needs. Uh, then next we are <clears throat> instantiating the application object uh, with PyWinAuto. And then we're using PyWinAuto uh, to connect to a particular application process. Okay, um, this is going to be the process of the Google Chrome. I'll show you guys how to get that. Um, and then we actually saying that we want a window of that app that has this particular uh, title, and our title was open. So and when we find a window like that we're gonna assume that that's our dialog so here we're creating the, the uh, dialog object that is going to be referenced throughout the functions later on in this object so here we have internal function that will actually wait for the dialog to uh, to pop up and that's going to be called in all the functions that interact with the dialog and we have three main functions that do interactions with the dialog uh, the first one will actually input whatever you pass in to the path to the file that's uh, th th this function is going to input that into the text box in the dialog and then it's going to return self then next function accept it's going to uh, wait for the dialog to appear set focus to it and if you look at the functions we always set focus first before we do something with the dialog we set focus to it because if you're running something in parallel, it is possible that you will lose focus on the dialog even when it was just opened. So before we accept it, decline it, or start typing stuff, we do set focus on that uh, dialog object first. 
then <clears throat> once we have the focus uh, in scope of accept we click on the accept button and then we check if the dialog is still there if it's still there we go into a recursion mode where we try to accept it again and that's where the recursion limit comes in so the recursion will continue until we reach that limit um, every time we go into recursion we increment the current recursions and then if it's successful this if we didn't go or if we went through this logic and it's successful um, then we set recursion back to zero so next time we start fresh um, same thing happens with decline except we just click on a decline button if you're trying to accept a dialog to which you did not provide any file input uh, this will actually fail so let's take a look at how this actually works um, on a real life example so let me just comment that out so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the driver we're gonna go to that website we're gonna find the button uh, to initiate the upload process and at that point we'll create um, or at that point we'll determine the uh, process ID for the Chrome driver so this call right here will return the process ID for the Chrome driver itself and then we use psutil process to actually get all the children of that process so that will mean all the Chrome instances uh, that are spawned and the Chrome instance um, basically Chrome will have um, process ID for each tab that is uh, currently open in that particular um, uh, Chrome driver so then that's the PID that we're actually going to pass in to the system dialog to instantiate it and we don't pass in the title because the title is default so then we just reference the function to go ahead and type in the path to the file that we want to upload which is this image here uh, and then we just accept the dialog so once we accept the dialog we should see the image uploaded um, so let's go ahead and run it all right so that worked so next we're gonna talk about Sikuli, how we can do the same thing with uh, Sikuli. So this code snippet over here, I don't have a separate class. Uh, this is just a very simple uh, code snippet that will do the same thing, but using image recognition. So in this path, uh, this is where I have uh, Sikuli installed. This guy right here, the run Sikuli.cmd, this is the this is the command that's going to allow you to run Sikuli from your CMD. So that's what I have here. Then I have my script. So the script is, if you don't have Sikuli installed, by the way, I do have a video that will show you how to install this on your system. So make sure to check it out and install it. And then you can have the same uh, Sikuli ID uh, where you can write a script like this. But essentially, when, when you finish writing a script, you go into file and you do save as and you get a folder like this uh, which is systems dialog that's equally anything a folder with extension that's is is basic basically means that securely can run that um, now if you take a look at this uh, script this is a python script even it's going to be ran inside java but this is a python script python syntax python packages um, so this line here means I'm defining a certain screen where Sikuli should be looking for uh, for these images. I have two screens, so I had to specify that I want Sikuli to be looking on the first screen. Uh, then I'm defining some variables, and this is just uh, basically uh, variables for, well, this is input field where I want to type stuff up right this is the button to accept the dialog and the button to decline the dialog now this script is a little bit more simplified it doesn't determine or it doesn't distinguish between different types of dialogues whether you want to save or open so this one only supports open um, if you're going to use this script you may want to kind of tweak it up a little bit uh, to 
be a bit smarter. <clears throat> now, we're using sys package here to to be able to accept uh, variables uh, in the um, arguments, uh, rather, in the script. Um, because I wanted to make the script a little bit uh, dynamic without having to change it. So basically, there is an argument that you can pass in uh, that will tell the script whether it should accept or decline the dialogue. So if the argument, if the very first argument that's passed in is equal to one, that means we want to accept the dialogue. Uh, otherwise, you want to decline it. So then here I say that I want to type something into the input field, and that's going to be determined by the second argument that I pass into the script. And then basically this is going to click on the button that we want to click, whether it's accept or decline. So very simple. Uh, we save that script, we get this, and then we can run that through CMD using this run security X. So the way we're going to run it is using a sub process. So in sub process, we're going to pass in a string for the security uh, CMD command minus R and then the script. This is what we saved. Uh, this is this uh, path, this folder, which is right here. Uh, and then we pass in our args this way, dash dash args. And then both of them are going to be strings uh, just for safety, wrapping them in quotes. Uh, and I'm passing in zero here, which means it's going to decline. Uh, let's actually change that to accept. And then we have a file here. This is the file that I want to um, upload, which is this image here, same image. So let's go ahead and run this, uh, and it should work just the same as it worked before. So this over here just means we want to go ahead and kick off uh, this instructions. So basically start, and then we wait for the process to finish. So let's go ahead and run it. JVM spins up. It's not as fast as the uh, as Pi Winato. It actually needs to kind of spin up. So <clears throat> there we go. Uh, so two ways of working with dialogues. Uh, one with Pi Winato, one with Sicuria. Um Now, if if I were to pick one, I would pick uh, Pi Winato, uh where possible because it's a little bit more robust. Um, and also it doesn't have all the limitations that you get with the um, uh, Sikuli because when Sikuli runs you can't really do anything with your mouse uh, and whatever this Sikuli is working with it has to be in the foreground uh, if it's actually in the background Sikuli will not be able to uh, work with it it's not even going to see it so if you're running stuff in parallel uh, you can get away with, with Pi Renato when you set focus but with Sikuli it's going to be very very difficult uh, but if you have no choice, uh, then Sikuli definitely can do whatever you see on the screen, Sikuli can do, and that's a big plus, but it's just, mm, it, it's not scalable. So there you have it, guys. Uh, if you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and share, and as always, have a good one. And also, this code is going to be on GitHub as well. All right, take care.